Solis. Better insights for better outcomes. This session was recorded live at our Advances in Population Health Management Workshop in London, November 2018. A great pleasure in inviting to the uh, the podium Dawn Dawn Richardson. Uh, Dawn is a program manager for the One Croydon uh, Alliance. She works jointly across the CCG and local government in Croydon, and we've been trying to support you in some small way in some of your endeavours over the last um, eighteen months. Hello, everyone. Um, so, so I'm, I'm Dawn Richardson. I'm the program manager uh, working for One Croydon Alliance. Um, I'm here today um, to talk about how One Croydon Alliance has collaborated with SOLIS to enhance their population health management tool. So who's, who are, you know, what is One Croydon Alliance? So we're not a legal entity, um, but we're actually formed of six organisations. So we, there are two um, sets of commissioners. So we have Croydon Council as well as Croydon um, CCG. And our provider organisations um, is uh, Croydon Council um, and HUK Croydon on behalf of the voluntary and community sector and our health partners are um, SLAM for mental health, um, for the GP practices, um, Croydon GP Collaborative and Croydon Health Services. Um, so it's been a long, complex journey over the last four years uh, for the six partners to actually come together to sign the Alliance Agreement. Um, so all the, the bullet points up there, um, I won't, I'm not going to read them, you can uh, read them yourself at, at your leisure. Um, but really, um, initially, um, uh, back in 2014, we were asked um, to think about outcomes-based commissioning for the over 65s. What I would say at that time when, um, so I've been working on this project for the last three years, so I would go around talking to, to various teams, and the big pushback was, this is great for the over 65s, but what about the rest um, of the population? Um, so I do know um, quite recently we have signed a contract um, to move to whole um, population, um, but today I'm here just to talk about the over 65s. Um, just wanted to share with you just quickly about our vision. Um, so it is about working together to help you live your life. Um, one of the things we, we don't talk about patients, don't talk about service users, they are the people of Croydon. So we do challenge, we ask the voluntary and community sector to always pull us up. If we talk about patient, it's a no-no. So that's one of the big things that, that we're quite passionate about, that we talk about the person or the individual. Um, so the vision really sort of focuses on partnership working and the outcomes of the care and support provided to the people of Croydon. Um, so the sort of the key features of our new model of care, um, really it's sort of, I want to sort of focus around the locality working. Um, so the locality working aligns the various locality network models um, across the alliance, such as primary care homes and um, the integrated community network model, which I will just quickly take you through. So I'm the programme manager for um, implementing, we refer to ICNs, Health Love Our Ac Acronyms, so in, um, integrated community networks. So it's absolutely a proactive care model. We hate being reactive all the time. So um, three years ago, we set about thinking, how can we be proactive? And how, do, how can we identify um, our patients or our people? Um, so you probably all know about the Kaiser Triangle. So it's just looking at what, what people are we going to be supporting um, through this model. And what we were really keen to do was to, to wrap professionals um, around um, the GP networks. Um, so um, Croydon, the Alliance Partners, has uh, invested um, a significant sum of money and we recruited um, personal independence coordinators, so PICS for short, from HUK Croydon. Um, and they're a fabulous service and they are truly patient or person-centred. So they come um, at it from the perspective of what does that individual want to achieve from their life. So we never go to them and say, how, we do, how can we support you about your diabetes? Because actually that might not be what their goal is. So 
So we've, we've invested um, 18 picks um, in this service. We've recruited um, pharmacists and we've invested more money into community nursing as well. So again, it, it's putting all that resource around the GP practice. And our aim really is that each professional focuses on the work that they are trained um, to provide. So, for example, the GP, we're asking the GP to, to, to um, support um, people with medical conditions. And those people with um, social needs would go to the social workers or to the PICs. Um, so we have um, a lot of cultural changes, um, breaking down barriers. Um, but what's great about the model and coming from the six provider and, and commissioners is that it's supported from the top. So it's um, by our chief executives as well as supported from the bottom. And so um, what would happen is that from um, our huddle models, which is um, weekly or fortnightly meetings at GP practices, our network facilitators who I support would come back to me and say, Dool, you know, they're saying this at, at the huddle, how do we get over this? You know, there's a few sort of shrugs. And then we would go and talk to lots of people and then we'll resolve those issues. So it's absolutely um, a can-do approach, very flexible, adaptable, because um, we are there f to support um, the person who needs those health and care um, services. Um, so at these um, huddles um, are six um, key professionals, so um, the GP, community nurse, PICS, um, pharmacists, social workers, and the people that actually hold the team together are the fabulous network facilitators, but I would say that because they're my team. Um, without them, it's like herding cats all the time, but it's really holding people to account, and um, what they do in these huddles they take the actions of what each professional said they were going to do and then they report back at that agreed time. So we're constantly making sure people don't drop um, through the cracks. Um, again, it's very person-centred, holistic approach. Um, it has to be holistic, it has to be a, a system approach um, to provide sort of the, the, the support and care um, for people with, our, you know, with complex health and care needs. Um, so, selecting the right people for huddle discussions. So that has been quite challenging. Um, what we've said is that we, we need to be finding people who are at risk of a hospital admission. So this is proactive. We don't want to wait until they pitch up into A&E or, or being admitted. So we've looked at risk stratification. Um, we've... Um, Sort of, we needed to understand sort of the population at, at practice level, and it's about aligning the information from the SOLIS restratification tool with other sources of information. Um, so it's not just um, the SOLIS tool on its own. Um, but SOLIS tool has was introduced to Croydon a number of years ago. And we needed to, we sort of looked at the tool to say, actually, how can this actually work um, for the huddle model? Um, which is why we started our conversation with Solis probably about a year ago. Yeah. Do you want to talk about how that was developed? Yeah, I can do. I'm Sarah Adams and I work for Solis for anyone who doesn't know me. Um, I just thought I'd help Dawn out with talking through. Um, how we developed the case finding algorithms for the huddles. So as Dawn said, this needed to be very much focused on people in Croydon. So they wanted to take it away from a, a standard out the box, uh, black box approach and, and look at the, to try and make it proactive really, to look at the, the features and the profile of, of pa um, people, rather than saying patients, in Croydon that makes them more likely to become sort of high, in, high intensity users of the healthcare system, end up getting admitted. So what you can see here is just a process really that we follow with all of our customers. So anybody else who works with us would have seen this model as well. Um, there's a lot of discovery that goes into it. So 
it's working with clinicians it's and and you know the people who know the people the best so it might be practice managers network facilitators um, any of the other professionals matrons social workers for example and it's looking at the problem that you're trying to solve and trying to match um, the profile of the patients or oh, sorry people Dawn, <laughs> that you're trying to target as well so we did a lot of that um, but it's also matching it up and looking in the data to see um, what you find and, and testing your hypothesis if you like so we did a lot of work looking through the, the data that's in Croydon over the past few years and identifying those characteristics of, of, of the people that do end up being the people that we would like to prevent and, and be proactive with. We put that into a case finding algorithm and um, importantly just to say as well is that we pull out the features that you want but we also look at the features that you may not want so that you can build in exclusions because for practices there's probably nothing more frustrating um, when you're trying to find patient people so I for a very particular program that you pull out people that you that are not suitable we also looked at the workforce and the number of um, people that would be identified to see if the actual process could cope with it as well so there was some modeling that was done there and it's also about surfacing a, a, a case finding algorithm and tool that's got the right sort of variables in it to enable the practices or the people the people who are working with the tool to make the right sort of decision so that was the design and production and we did a lot of testing with the GPs um, in Croydon to test the people that were being surfaced by the tool to check if they, they, were, they were the right sorts of people as well and we did further refining and I think we did that a number of times didn't we Dawn, maybe four or five times before we then started to push it out to a number of pilot practices in Croydon who did further refining of the model and looked at it and tested it through. Now in terms of the actual model itself these are the things which are particular to people in Croydon who end up being quite high intensity users of, of the healthcare system who end up going through and being admitted quite a lot. So um, it's no surprise probably, um, but one of the main key factors of people who get admitted is that they've been admitted a lot of times before and also they end up going to A&E a lot. But the other things which were really key is looking at the, the morbidity of the patient and um, not the particular chronic conditions apart from diabetes and hypertension which were very particular to Croydon, but looking at the, the level of morbidity. Deprivation was a really key marker as well because people we found access healthcare in a different way depending on their social sort of needs. Um, a mental health came into it quite strongly as well and um, also if a person had a polypharmacy marker on their clinical record that was taken into account too. Well Thank you. <coughs> so this is our um, framework for selecting the right people for huddle discussions. So it's part of our whole system model of working and the aim really is about helping practices um, select the right people for huddle discussion. Um, so on the, on the far side you've got the um, bespoke tool that was developed um, for us by Solis but it, that's, that's not enough on its own. So it's about the opportunistic identification which tends to be um, at the moment the, the main way of that GPs and the other professionals um, identify people for huddles. But it's forever um, evolving, so when I go out to practices with Sarah, we talk about the Solace tool, and then we actually ask them, well, how do you find um, uh, people to bring for a huddle discussion? So this is always um, evolving um, sort of o over time. But I thought I'd share that with you, and if you think we've missed anything, please let me know, and I shall add it to our, our framework. Um, so we've learned a couple of things along the way um, with rolling out um, the Solis tool. Um, quality of coding um, is really important. And also um, practices logging on to the um, Solis tool. Um, it's interesting because we always say to them that before we come and see you, please confirm that you have access to Solis. And they go, yes, yes, definitely. So I say to Sarah, yes, yes, definitely. And then we get there and 20 minutes later, they're still like trying to get on. So we've, we've come up with a, pl a new plan that Sarah talks to the practice manager a week before we get there 
to say, right, can you actually get in? Because they think by having the login is it, sufficient, but it, it's not. So we're, we're learning as we're going to make sure that we're as efficient um, as possible. And also um, practices, sometimes their internet um, can be an issue. Um, and then that then then Solis gets the blame for oh it's your tool and they're like no it's not your tool our tool you know it, it, it is the internet but generally um, when I've shown them this framework and I've said to them you know how how does that feel um, all the practices so far have said yes that that's great and you know that will help them um, proactively identify people for huddles. Um, so the outcomes, um, it's been a real success. Um, so we've seen a reduction in hospital admissions for in, in the over 65s. Um, because there's, there's been great success, Croydon are now saying, whole population, go, go, go. And it's like, wait a minute, you know, we, we know it needs to be very controlled and, and done in a planned way. Um, but that's really, really exciting. Um, so... The next steps in our journey. So the next um, phase, I mean, you can see the scale of the change. I'm not going to go through all the different things, but that's the plan going forward. Um, so it's huge. Um, whole system approach. Um, and like I say, um, all populations. So that, that's great. So um, this is the beginning of the change, which is complicated. There's going to be more obstacles um, to overcome, um, but this is part of our journey. Thank you, Dawn. Again, we'll have a For more information and insights, visit our website, solace.co.uk.